we were just looking at a really cool stick that has a bunch of species of lichen growing on it. Lichens are a fascinating organism that I feel like the general public doesn't really know a lot about. And I think they're so cool that that's kind of an injustice. So today I wanted to give you an introduction to lichen so that when you go out and you see them growing on walls and trees and rocks that you have a better understanding of what it is and why it's there. So in this video I wanted to go into the symbiosis that makes lichen what it is and growth forms, reproduction, and a little bit of the contributions that it makes to the human and ecological world. What is a lichen? In this video I'm going to refer to it as a species or an organism, but it's really a composite of different species. Lichen is the symbiosis or association between a fungus and a photosynthesizing organism generally an algae or cyanobacteria. In this association, the fungus is called a mycobiont, while the photosynthesizing element is called a photobiont. The fungus provides protection to the photobiont, and in return it takes some of the carbohydrates that the photobiont has made. A lichen symbiosis is a balancing act. If one of the organisms grows faster than the other, the lichen will often break down. Scientists have been unable to recreate lichens in the lab by putting together fungi and their associated photobionts. It's been suggested that microbes may play a role, and recently research has uncovered that yeast may play a part in helping lichen form. Two of the most important limiting factors for lichen are moisture and light. Different lichens have vastly different requirements, especially depending on which biomes it's composed of. When lichen dries out, it goes into a dormant state, but if I were to re-moisten this and put it in the right light conditions, then it would come back to life. Lichens photosynthesize best at 50 to 70% saturation. These light and moisture requirements are what allow lichen to grow in such extreme environments. They can be found from arid ecosystems like the desert and tundra to wet places like the rainforest. They can even withstand conditions in space. Lichens can be divided up into a handful of different growth forms. These growth forms don't indicate relatedness between the species, but are simply a way to categorize them and help make IDing and talking about them easier. The five primary growth forms of lichen are crustose, squamulose, foliose, umbilicate, and fruticose. Anatomy. Anatomy differs quite a bit between growth forms. Generally though, each has the following layers, cortex, or basically the protective skin, the photobiont layer, the medulla. The entire lichen is called the thallus. There are different features that one can look for on the thalli to help with species identifications, like cilia on this lichen, for example. Reproduction. To reproduce sexually, the fungal component of the lichen produces fruiting bodies that release spores. In order to create its own lichen, this, these spores must go and find their compatible photobiont. One common type of reproductive structure is the apothecia. Lichens can also reproduce vegetatively. This might involve breaking a piece off and starting a new elsewhere, or it can involve the use of diaspores. Diaspores, unlike the fungal spores released during sexual reproduction, are a few algal cells surrounded by fungal cells, so they're able to establish more easily as a lichen. When identifying a lichen, there are a few features to look for, like ceridia and acidia. So, why should we care about lichen, other than the fact that they're a really cool symbiotic relationship that has been evolving for millions of years? First, cyanobacteria and lichen can fix atmospheric nitrogen, making it available for use by plants. Lichen also breaks down rocks physically and via chemical weathering, which helps with soil development. Lichen can be used as air quality biomonitors because they are sensitive to sulfur dioxide and nitrogen. It feeds animals like reindeer. In fact, lichen can be an important food source to animals in areas where water is limited. So I hope you enjoyed this video on lichen and some of its growth forms and reproduction capabilities. And if you turned out that you found something that you're really into, you can check out my Redbubble store, link in the description. And I have some artwork made by me that you can buy on shirts and other types of merchandise. So be sure to check that out and I will see you guys next time. And if you like these lichen designs, 
I have some pretty cool mushroom designs that can also be found in my Redbubble store. So please go check out my shop and all proceeds go to funding a graduate student. <laughs>